Hello! Welcome back to the Wrestling Newsroom. I'm your host, Orthing Dressing, and today we're going to be looking at all the wrestling news from Tuesday. Let's start with the biggest news coming out of the last couple of days. John Cena and Nikki Bella have split up. She posted the following on her Instagram account. After much contemplation and six years being together, Nikki Bella and John Cena announced today the decision to separate as a couple. When, While this decision was a difficult one, we continue to have a great deal of love and respect for one another. We ask that you respect our privacy during this time in our lives. Uh, we then have John Cena's first public statement. Hardship, loss and humility are extremely difficult waters to navigate, but perseverance through them builds a strength to withstand anything that life throws at you. Uh, his, uh, and then we have a source from People Magazine, I think, people.com, uh, with uh, a bit of information saying... She never gave him an ultimatum. He talked a real good game about having changed, about having his priorities straight, knowing what's important, and that was her. But as the day got closer, it was like he just went back to who he's always been, which was someone who puts himself first, always. He is an incredibly dedicated, driven and ambitious guy, and for the longest time he said he didn't think he had room in his life for a spouse or kids. It seems in the end that this was still the truth. The source added, this was supposed to be the happiest time in her life. He ruined it and blew everything up. Um, and then we go to a bit more, I did. Uh, he was making it abundantly clear that he was going into this gritted teeth the whole time. Nikki is an amazing, talented, strong, one-of-a-kind woman. Anyone will be lucky to have her in their life. Yet John acted more and more like he was doing her a favour by somehow conceding to go ahead and marry her. Nikki doesn't need a pity proposal, a pity wedding and a pity husband. She's a phenomenal, tremendous woman. Uh, and then he did one last public statement uh, saying sometimes we must bear the burden of shame and judgement to protect and give to the others we love. Hashtag rise above hate. So in just a little uh, clarification, he is a bit self-involved and kind of went, I don't want to do this, but I'll do it for you. I'll grip my teeth and I'll get this done, kind of thing. And he always puts himself first. That's kind of what's led to this breakup. <clears throat> Probably could have summed that up quicker, but there you go. I've given the actual sources. <clears throat> and then we go to Apollo Cruise, is once again listed as Apollo Cruise on WWE's official website. He's also wore his Apollo Cruise t-shirt on last night's Raw. So it looks like they just dropped the whole thing. So thank God, because... Apollo sounded absolute terrible. Uh, and then we go to what the winner of the greatest Royal Rumble match will get. They will get a trophy as a prize. It's not been uh, just found out if any they'll get anything else, like a tile match or anything like a traditional Royal Rumble. But at this time, they get a lovely, nice trophy. But to be fair, the trophy does look really nice. Uh, and then we go to the news that, again, The Undertaker will destroy Rusev in the casket match. So, yeah, they've uh, now switched to uh, Rusev going against The Undertaker again. Lana did another kayfabe. I'll allow my husband to do it again. Uh, the reason this could have happened, a source in WWE told Brad Shepard that somebody in the office was definitely rubbed the wrong way with the initial comments Rusev made to TMZ where he referred to The Undertaker being old. WWE is very sensitive to the potential of offending old-timers. They realised The Undertaker wasn't offended. They put Rusev back in the match. That kind of just seems to be what went on. A couple of comments, people weren't happy, they took him out. The students have realised The Undertaker's fine with it. They put him back in. So, I think Rusev's going to lose because it's The Undertaker... But it's going to be a great match nonetheless. Can't wait to see what's going to do with it. <clears throat> and then, just in case you miss Monday Night Raw, here is the list of every single superstar traded to 2 Raw at the shake-up. Jinder Mahal, who lost the United States Championship, by the way, to Jeff Hardy, who's now a Grand Slam champion. That's my other news. Jeff Hardy, Grand Slam champion. Hold every single bout of WWE. Oh, yes. Boys, he is definitely going to be in the Hall of Fame by himself. He's definitely had a better singles career than he has had a tag team, even though he's a very successful tag team wrestler. Uh, the Riot Squad, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Zack Ryder, announced by WWE Online, 
Brazango, Natalia, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Mojo Rawley announced by WWE Online, Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, Mike Kanellis, WWE Online, Ascension, WWE Online, and Chad Gable, but not Shelton Benjamin. Are they going on a singles run? Are they going to team him back up with Jason Jordan? There's a lot to go along with this. What are they going to do with him? And then The Miz is moving to SmackDown. That's the only one we know about that. I'll probably cover what happened at the Superstar Shake-Up tomorrow with the SmackDown ones. But there you go. There's the list. Uh, and then we have some Hollywood box office news, which is about two WWE superstars. The Rock's new movie Rampage opened at number one domestic box office spot with four, uh, $34.5 million, while the movie's domestic sales aren't considered to be overly impressive, considering the $120 million production budget. The movie did well internationally with $114 million at the box office. So it's taken 148 million worldwide as its opening. So it could it could still make its money back, but well, it's made its money back, but it needs to make a bit more to be properly successful. And again, if you spend 120 million on a film, you're gonna almost guarantee that you're never gonna make that much money back. Uh, and then Blockers did 20.5 million dollars for the opening weekend. Did 10.2 million in its second weekend. Uh, <laughs> It has brought in $53 million so far, and with just a $21 million production bullet budget, the early numbers are considered to be a success for Cena, which is fantastic. Go for it, Cena. We know you can do it. Then we have a Vader update. He tweeted... Uh, uh, he tweeted, I'm officially out of the hospital and in rehab. It's a long road back to the ring. Wish me luck. Best of luck, Vader. I'm so happy you're out of the hospital, my friend. I seriously am glad you pulled through this because it was scary for a while that you weren't going to make it through this uh, very bad um, patch of health. Then we go to the ever good superstar Billy Graham giving his thoughts on Ronda Rousey. He went, first off, the fan who wrote, I find Ronda using Piper's gimmick nauseous. You, my brother, are dead on, my man. I find it totally insult and absolutely reveals that she does not have an original thought in her head. Damn, can't she be original in at anything? I'm going to stop him here. Rowdy Ronda Rousey was officially endorsed and told to use the gimmick by Roddy Piper. If he doesn't know that, he's stupid. That's why she does it. To pay homage to her hero. And are you going to take Shock of Hulk Hogan for ripping you off? Because, to be fair, he did a better job of being you than you did. Uh, this shows you how shallow she is. And, by the way, I'm a fan of females being in the main event. That is why I put up this photo of Amanda Newts kicking her ass in 48 seconds. She looks pitiful. A TK in 48 seconds on December 30th, 2016 by Newts. A real fight and Rousey's just a jobber. Oh, my God. I hate this guy already. Um, speaking of jobbers, I read a quote that by Meltzer shook me to the core. It goes as follows. There was a rumour going around WWE official prior to make the Mania 34 that Rousey was going to make Triple H tap out to the armbar instead of Stephanie McMahon. It appears that the company went with the latter decision specifically due to storyline continuation reasons as Rousey attacked Stephanie's arm on the next night on Raw, where Triple H is not a regular on-screen character and has disappeared for now. What? Miss Lucy is going to make Triple H tap out this would have been uh, would have received as well as a cement truck full of pig shit being dumped on mainly to 34 fans god folks what is WWE thinking Ronda Rousey is not a god of some kind or a mere female UFC failure that got a flat ass kicked twice on the way out now this is nauseating I demand that you fans respond to this crap and do the WWE is trying to lay on you by even thinking about making Triple H tap out god this makes me sick <clears throat> to help you get over your urge to vomit over this news, please click the link directly below. My main man, Mike, found me. Just a 60 second promo from me from Florida. That's a load of crap from him. Um, if he made it to it's WWE, you got to be a star. <laughs> that shows how WWE have faith in storylines. Fucking hell, dude. Absolutely fuck off. Let's leave her alone for the love of God. Well, because she got kicked out, kicked her ass in two matches. This guy just gives nothing but controversial, shitty opinions nowadays. 
I'm, I'm surprised they've let you stay in the Hall of Fame at this point. Uh, and then on this week's episode of Jump to Be Roll, Corey Graves accidentally referred to the Balor Club as the Bullet Club. Uh, Finn wrote the following on Twitter and received the response by Graves. For real, for life, for real, forever, at Corey Graves. She went, Finn, you're a widely popular man. Please stop starting clubs. They're hard to keep track of. Hashtag Balor Club. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Just a kayfabe answer, but that's so funny. I like it. Um, and then, during the episode of Wrestling Observer, Dave Meltzer discussed Natalia being moved to Raw and working with Ronda Rousey. He said, Natalia is probably a really good first programme to do with because she's comfortable with because they're comfortable with each other. They know how, how to work with each other. I mean, they've worked enough with each other. Then Natalia has a better read on Ronda's wrestling strength and weaknesses than almost any other woman on the roster. And that was made pretty clear from the start with Natalia going over. So in a, that sense, it's positive for Natalia. I mean, protecting Ronda Rousey is one of the main things and that's they're gonna do over the next year. Natalia was one of the key people training Rousey and the footage of them playing together was uploaded by Rousey several months ago. So yeah, best of luck. I, I'm not a big fan of Natalia, but if it's going to help Rousey, let's all go for this, to be honest, because that, that's what you got to do. Uh, Yeah, I think that's all the wrestling news. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you all for watching the wrestling newsroom. <coughs> I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give this video a like. Please support me on Patreon. I'll link in the description below. Subscribe to see more content. And I'll catch you later. Bye.